and Karen, and welcome to Fitness with Karen. This is Power Vinyasa Flow. So actually, it's just a Vinyasa Flow. It's not power. So what I want you to do is meet me on the mat into a child's pose. We're going to start in this nice resting pose. Bring your toes to touch and walk your knees wide. Send your seat back. And let's just melt into our mat. So this is our nice resting pose. It's a good place to start if you're just beginning your yoga journey. I want you to think about just allowing the body to relax and let go. For today's practice, I want to focus on our hearts to open up our hearts. So we're going to do a lot of heart opening poses today to just free up our fear that we might be holding not even knowing. So as we surrender in our resting pose, I want you to just take this moment to find gratitude for another day that we are together. Another day to know our strength, our resilience. Know that we are filled with abundance and love and a lot of light. And everything is temporary. Maybe if you're feeling a little down, it's a temporary thing. We can turn that around. If you're feeling a little tightness in certain areas, I want you to send breath into that place. So right now we're just kind of connecting our mind and our body together and slowing our breath down. Intuitively, I want you to close your eyes and slow down your breath. And just notice the emotions, the sensations that are occurring at this moment as you find stillness on the mat. Again, nothing to change, but just to pay attention to the little things and honoring the little things. Like I'm honoring my left hip for not being in pain anymore. Those are the little, little goals, little, little victories that I have this week. What are yours? And find thanks. In our practice of yoga, we work with our yogic breath, our ujjayi pranayama. To begin, let's start with placing our tongue onto the roof of our mouth slightly. And I want you to constrict the back of the throat, like you're about to slightly snore as you enter the breath through the nose. And exhale the breath out of the nose, constricting the back of the throat, creating a slight snoring sound. And just take this moment to focus on that style of breathing. What are you noticing? Notice it brings the focus to the now. Let's talk about focus. I want you to draw your mind's eye to the space between your eyes. And as you bring that so soft focus between the eyes, I want you to breathe and connect that focus with your breath. Notice the texture of the breath. Is it smooth or is it choppy? If it's ragged, you're working too hard, smooth it out. And then once you get to that place, begin to relax the body. And just connect the breath, the mind. Now invite the body. Notice how gravity just pulls you a little closer to the earth as you continue to relax and soften. And this is where you want to be, this nice, relaxed state. 
Each inhalation is the same length as your exhalation. Stay here for four more rounds of breath. And then when you're ready for that final inhale, bring yourself up into a tabletop position. So let's just shift our hips side to side. This has been my go-to this week. Again, for having a hip issue, this really feels really good. So just kind of get to know your body, working your edge and stretch as far as you can. Maybe leaning into that side and just gently stretching it out. Gentle movements, again, no expectations, no judgment, no ego. You're not trying to go really overexert the stretch, but listening to the body and going to where the body needs to deepen. Sending your seat towards your heels, extended child's pose. Maybe sliding those hands a little way a bit further from you, dipping your chin into your chest, opening the back body. What does that mean to you today? So for me, I'm thinking about that lengthening and pulling and stretching and creating space. So again, we're really gonna pay attention to the body and how to move it to elongate. From here, let's come back and shift our weight forward in a modified plank. Walk your hands slightly forward, release the hips. Think about separating the shoulder blades as you press away from the ground. And don't let the chin touch the chest. I want you to elongate, creating that line of energy. And then exhale, send your seat back into your extended child's pose. We're just going to move front and back again. So inhale into your modified plank. Exhale into your extended child's pose. Inhale to your modified plank. Exhale into your modified child's pose. Last time, inhale into your modified plank. Exhale, send your seat back. And this time we're gonna create a big torso circle. So we're gonna shift forward. Send our weight to the right. Big range of motion with the hips down to the heels and then shifting it to the left, big circle. And you'll notice if you're tightening the hips, it's kind of, you want to hold back. So again, full range of motion, just kind of feel your body. And after your fourth circle, we're just gonna rotate the opposite direction. So really full range of motion, don't shorten your range of motion. Go to your edge and release the fear. And then once your fourth circle the opposite direction, we're gonna make it back into our modified plank, send our belly down to the floor, and we're gonna bring ourselves up onto the elbows to traction out our spine in Sphinx pose. Bring your feet wide, toes in, turn your heels out and rock your hips side to side just to loosen up the sacrum. So sacrum is really at the base before your spine from the bottom or your root of your root chakra from your tailbone all the way to your crown. So hug your arms in. So internally squeezing rather than externally pressing out. We're going to squeeze in, elbows towards the waist, relax the shoulders away from the ears, and I want you to dip your chin towards the throat, not the chest, the throat. Relax the lower back and then pull up. Feel that traction in that pulling, that lengthening, and then release the glutes. Don't tighten up the glutes, just lift and press and exhale up to the right. Inhale to center. Relax the hips, relax the glutes, exhale to the left. Feel that stretch, lift up and lengthen. Exhale to the right. 
Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Bring it back to center. We're going to lower ourselves down. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Shoulders away from the ears. Clip your elbows in towards your ribs and glue the legs together. Flowing cobra. Tops of your feet against the mat. Inhale, lift up and lengthen. So again, opening up the front line of the body. So think about just relaxing the shoulders and lifting. Shaking is good. Exhale, lower down. I want you to think about rows in the Titanic in the front of that boat, or right in front of that ship. Shoulders back, lift up, be free, open your heart. Exhale, lower it out. All right, how did that feel? Release everything, you're not in any harm, just listen to your body. Shoulders back, lift your heart up, keep your hips to the floor, exhale, lower it out. Now here's the challenge. You can maybe fly like Rose on the Titanic. Shoulders back, lift your heart up. Maybe take your arms all the way to the back without lifting your leg. And lower down, hands underneath the shoulders. Press into your child's pose, stretch it out. So that is what I talk about, freeing the heart. Opening the front line of the body. Be the channel, not the container. Go ahead and shift your weight into a tabletop position. Let's go for thread the needle. So hands, anchors to the floor. Inhale that right arm up. Exhale, slide that right hand right underneath you. Right shoulder to the floor, hips over the knees. We're gonna make that twist, threading the needle. So the purpose of this pose is not to relax the body and sink into your mat. You want to press away from the gravity and twist the torso. So you're going to use that left hand to support you underneath your shoulders. Try to keep the top of your feet against the mat as you pull your belly up and in to relieve any pressure on that right shoulder. Take that left arm up to the ceiling for an added stretch. Or maybe, if you're ready for it, if you were in my four o'clock class yesterday, go for that bind. Take that left hand inside that right thigh. Releasing that left hand underneath the shoulder. Inhale that right arm up. And then bring the hands down. Let's go for cow and cat. Inhale for cow. Exhale, round into your cat pose. One more time for a little reset. Inhale through your cow. Exhale through your cat pose. Neutral spine, let's do the left side. Lifting that left arm up to the sky. Keeping that wrist underneath that right shoulder. Sweep that left arm down. Hips over the knees. Twist up, look up. Again, don't let the body sink. Press, balancing on that left shoulder, lifting up through the ribs, pulling up from your belly, up and in, maybe lifting that right arm up. Externally rotating that bicep to open up that shoulder. Maybe if you're ready for it, take that right hand and slide it to the inside of your left thigh. If you want to work on deepening your twist, So I am pressing my right left arm down to help me twist. Try to keep my hips over the knees and lifting up and in to relieve any pressure on that left shoulder. Inhale that right arm up and place it underneath the shoulder. Inhale left arm up. Reset the spine into cow and cat. Inhale cow. Exhale cat. Final cow, and then final cat. Come back to neutral, extending that right leg behind you. The ball of that right foot plants down to the mat. Find that extension. So not your weight on the back, but I want you to even out your weight. So shifting your weight slightly forward, pressing into your knuckles and into your fingertips. Check your hands, maybe create an L and a J shape. So that way you don't put too much pressure on your wrist. We tend to do that. 
because we don't know how to anchor our hands. So again, if you claw up your mat like a suction cup and train your hands this way, it gets a little bit easier. Instead of your elbow points pointing outward, I want you to pull your elbow points towards your hips. That is working on that external rotation of the arms. Now let's shift the, hip, the heel of that right foot back, stretching out that calf. And then we're gonna shift the weight slightly forward, but still, when I say lifting it, uh, shifting it forward, you're still engaging through your center. Press your heel back again. Shifting slightly forward. Take that right foot to the left corner of your mat. Exhale, looking over that left shoulder. And from here, I want you to press and engage from your core and see if you can um, look at your left heel, your right heel over that left shoulder. Bring it back to tabletop. Extending that left leg behind, squaring the hips, engaging the core, finding your center balance. Where is your center and how can you feel really good about that? So now you're going to press your heels to the back, feeling that half stretch and Achilles stretch, shifting your weight slightly forward to find your center. Press your heels back, working your edge, shifting your forward, left heel to that right corner of your mat. Exhale, looking over to that right shoulder. You should be able to see your left heel if not, I want you to engage that left leg, squeeze up and look over that right shoulder. And when I say squeeze, you're not forcing a squeeze, right? <laughs> you're just lifting and engaging. Effort and ease, not force and strain. Come back to tabletop, curl the toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Walk your feet up gently, actually walk your heels, walk the dog. I know I've got you on your wrist a lot. We're going to fix that. Go ahead and pedal the heel, stretch it out. Maybe twisting side to side. And find stillness. Two rounds of breath in your downward facing dog. Looking up to the top, let's walk it up. Two fists between the feet, four hip distance apart. And everyone bending those knees, lifting your sit bones, shifting your weight towards the balls of your feet like you're about to tip over. But instead of scrunching your toes onto the mat, I want you to spread your toes wide. How do we do that? Just kind of feel it out. Cupping your elbows, hinging from the hips. And again, maybe letting your belly rest on top of the thighs as you fold forward. Shake your head no, shake your head yes, and sway right to left. When you're ready, stay still in your forward fold, release the hands alongside your feet, toe heel your feet to touch, slowly roll up to standing. And we made it to our standing pose. So as I meet you here to, stand, to our standing pose, hands in front of the heart for Samas Titihi, standing at attention. So let's work on that wrist. Bring the elbows together, interlace the hands, and you're just gonna circle the wrist around, stretching the wrist round, rotate it the opposite direction, and then we're just gonna flip it side to side, bending it right to left. Perfect, and let's press the palms forward, shoulders back and down as we extend the arms nice and straight, stretching out the elbows. Inhale, arms up over the head, softening the shoulders and pressing the palms up. Inhale to lengthen, relax and lengthen through the neck. Exhale, side bend to the right. So you're going to bring your weight onto that right leg to anchor as you lift and lengthen that left arm to the right side like you're doing a nice good morning stretch. So remember, be open, be free, try not to hold on, just let go, think about that side body openness, come back to center. All right, lifting and lengthening, anchoring your left foot into the mat. Exhale, side bend, 
to the left, opening up that right side. So just like we were going to do a big gigantic yawn, you're gonna inhale, lift, ah, bend a little bit deeper. All right, feel that openness on the right side. Inhale, come back up. Release the hands, shake it off. Now let's work on the front line of the body, heart opener. So in this one, we're gonna take our hands behind us into a nice bind. So talk about rotation. Arm, bicep, tricep. So this is internal rotation. If you take your hand out, that is your external rotation, yeah? So when you externally rotate, you want this arm bone to roll back and down to create that openness. So I talk about open. Now we're working on the chest, the pectoral muscles, and our collarbone. So now that you've gotten that, so rotate, release up the hands and then rotate the tricep back and the bicep outward. As you look forward, go ahead and maybe drop the head back. And then lift from the middle part of your back and lengthen, right? So you're creating space and grounding your feet down and you're being pulled and elongated into this gentle back bend. Now, if you have back issues and you need a little bit more support, you can unlace the hands, use the base of your heel of your hands to support you right on your sacrum. But again, if you practice it, lifting and lengthening, you can elongate and create space in between the vertebra. Come back down and come back to your standing position, shake it off. So how did that feel? Open, right? Free. As you reach up, let's go ahead and reach the arms up over the head, chin parallel to the floor. We're gonna take the arms to cactus. So instead of just doing this, I want you to rotate the shoulders back and down, squeeze the shoulder blades, see if your shoulder blades can touch, and then lift your heart up and open up your heart. Think about rolling your thighs slightly inward as you ground your feet down. Root to rise, root your feet down and lift from the middle part of your back and release the back of the head and open. Feeling strong, feeling rooted, feeling tall. And then inhale the arms back up to mountain. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. How did that feel? Open heart. Go ahead and plant your toes back down to the mat. Anchor your feet, close your eyes. Samastitihi. Standing at attention. So a lot of that heart opener probably made your heart race up. Working on calming the breath. Closing your eyes. Settling into the body. Finding stillness in your standing at attention. Samastitihi. Let's take a deep breath in. Exhale, open the eyes. Let's meet to the top of the mat if you're not already there. Half sun salutation. So we're just gonna warm up the body with that flow. To begin, circling the arms up, lifting the arms up over the head. You were here already, this is mountain. Keep your hands facing each other. Arms are like railroad tracks, nice, long, and parallel. We're gonna add a little back bend. So cactus arm, lift up, open up that heart. Ground your feet down, thighs slightly rolls in. Inhale, arms back up into your mountain pose. Exhale, swan dive forward fold, hinging from the hips and fold forward. Stay here for a moment. Now that we're in this folded pose, it might feel a little intense in the back of the leg. So soften your hip, fold and relax the upper body oh, in front of the legs. And think about opening up the back body by bringing your chin slightly into the chest and shifting your weight towards the balls of the feet. Inhale, halfway lift. Slide the hands in front of the shin bones, shoulders away from the ears, and create that nice tabletop position. Notice the sensations of the legs. Ground energy, our earth energy rising up through the legs, through the kneecaps, through the quadricep muscles, all the way to our tailbone as our sit bones shoots up towards the ceiling. 
Exhale, release back to your forward fold. Slowly rise up back to mountain. Let's begin. Exhale into our cactus, our back bend. Open up the heart. Inhale, arms up back to mountain. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale to your forward fold. Inhale, rise up to mountain. Last time, exhale into your cactus arm back bend. Open up the heart. Inhale, arms up, back to mountain. Exhale, swan dive into your forward fold. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale back to forward fold. Inhale, arms up high, mountain pose. Moving on to full sun salutation. Exhale into your back bend. Inhale into your mountain. Exhale, swan dive to your forward fold. Inhale to your halfway lift. We've been here already. This time, make your way to plank pose. Modification, drop to your knees. Stay here for one more cycle of breath. Exhale, shift your weight forward, elbows in, knees, belly, chin, or chaturanga down. Let's work on our upward facing dog. I like to keep the tops of my feet against the mat. Wrists underneath the shoulders, legs are active. Again, open up the heart. Strong and effortless. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's add two more. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, step, hop, or jump. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale into your mountain. Exhale into your back bend. Inhale into your mountain pose. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high to low plank, Chaturanga Dandasana, or we have the option to short hip to downward facing dog. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three rounds of breath here. Find your best self in your downward dog. Find that awesome pose. Final round, inhale, looking up. Exhale, step or hop to the top. Inhale into your halfway lift. Exhale to your forward fold. Last round, here we go. Inhale into your mountain. Exhale into your back bend, lift and lengthen. Inhale into your mountain pose. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana, high to low plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Moving on, stay here. Three rounds of breath. Calm the mind, calm the body. Effort and ease. Inhale to your three-legged dog, right leg lifts up high, left foot ankles, anchors down with the left heel. You want to extend the arms away, pulling up from your belly, up and in, and extend. Good. Step that right leg between the hands, drop down to your left knee, low lunge. Let's begin to square the hips. So releasing, again, thinking about opening up that right left hip flexor by releasing and lifting up the heart. Now you're gonna probably feel, oh shoot, this is too tight, I can't go further. Then maybe just stay there and breathe. And then when you're feeling a little stronger, anchor that right foot, square your hips, and just kind of feel your way into opening up that space. So this is in your low lunge. Relax the hips, ground that 
when we write heel down, does that change anything? Maybe it makes it a little easier, not so strained, a little more open. We're gonna go for our half monkey god pose. Walk our hands back, stretch out that front leg. Send your hips back, stretching out that front leg. Maybe even scooting that right leg forward. So in this pose, you wanna square your hips, lift up, and then lengthen the spine. So if we're here, send your sit bones back, lift up and tilt your hip points upward. Which is hard when you're trying to send your sit bones back. Feel your way, what works out for your body. If you want to deepen, go ahead and curl your toes towards your shin. Try not to put too much weight on that left knee. Go ahead and balance yourself out. And then let's go dynamically move front and back. Inhale to your lunge. Release the hips. Exhale, walk it back, extend the leg. Half monkey god pose. We'll opening up that hamstring. Inhale into our low lunge. Exhale, extend that right leg. Inhale into our low lunge, prepping up into this deep stretch. Exhale, extending that right leg. Let's move on to our low lunge for this final one. Curl your left toe, lift the knee, lift the knee off the ground. So when you're lifting that left leg off the ground, I want you to press into that left heel and activate that leg. Really squeeze up and in. Scissoring, bringing it to the center. Left hand next to that right foot. Reach your right arm up and release the hips. Lift up and in through the ribs for that nice, strong twist. Shaking is good. Relax the shoulders. Release the hands back down to the mat. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pedal it out. Lifting left leg up. Right anchors, light right heel anchors down, square the hip, continue to lengthen. So more about that alignment. Step that left foot between the hands, drop down to your right knee, and relax the hips. Opening up the front line of the body gently. So it's not a force, because when you're tight in, tight in your hip flexor, you want to round, right? So what we want to do is we want to open up and release. So we're going to release the hips forward. Take your time. Challenge is good. Square the hips. Grounding your right, left heel to the mat as you release the hips. Squaring the hips. Good. Walk your hands back into your half monkey god pose. Left hip back, right hip forward. And then instead of rounding the spine, can you lengthen the spine? Maybe even sliding that left foot forward to get a deeper stretch. Maybe curling your toes towards the shin for a deeper stretch. The challenge here to straighten out that knee. Inhale into your low lunge. Taking our time, releasing our hips. Exhale, half monkey god pose. Twice more. Inhale into your low lunge. Exhale, extend. Inhale into our low lunge. Exhale, extend. Final low lunge, moving into our twist. Planting that right, left heel down, curling your right toe, lift the knee off the ground. Stay here for a moment, find your center first. Get low, get centered. Right hand in the middle of the back, lifting that left arm up. Feel it, right? Doing it and doing it properly changes. So the more we practice the right way, we feel stronger. Because if you're just holding back and just kind of, you're not getting that full openness, right? So you want to stay open. 
finding freedom on the mat, finding that space. Exhale, hands to the mat, send it to your downward facing mat. All right, let's go for our standing poses. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it between the hands, low lunge. Stay low, spin up that back foot, cartwheel up, warrior two. So let's work on our warrior two. Right knee over the ankle, hip points up, pressing the outer edge of that left foot. Arms are nice and strong and wide. How can you find your best warrior two? How can you equal your balance? There was a time that I would roll my instep of my foot inward. That means my knee buckles inward. So by pressing into that right pinky toe, you're opening up the tightness on that inner thigh and that hip. So the first time it's gonna hurt, it's gonna be tight, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. So find comfort in the discomfort and breathe. Inhale that front leg straight to triangle. So shifting forward, taking the arms 12 to six o'clock, sending your left hip back, lengthening the spine forward, and elongating, elongating that right leg. So grounding, lifting. In this lovely triangle pose, let's take one more cycle of breath. Stay for your exhale. We're gonna inhale, transition into our warrior two. We're gonna inhale, shift back, reverse warrior. So reverse warrior, left hand wraps around the inside of that left thigh. Think about squaring your hips to the left side of the room as you anchor that right pinky toe. So you're really opening up the front line of the body from your hips to your spine. Exhale, extended side angle. So the leg stays the same, you're just bringing your elbow on top of that right knee, lifting that left arm up into a nice diagonal pose. Where are you with that left foot? Check in. Where are you with your hip points? And can you rotate up and into that right rib and spin your heart up towards the sky? Freedom, stretch, right? You're lifting your head, you're not letting the head sag, you're not curling your arm, you're creating that line of energy. We're gonna come back into our reverse warrior. Exhale to downward facing dog, unless you want a vinyasa, feel free to vinyasa. We'll meet back down onto the mat. Changing lanes here. Left leg lifts up high, three-legged up. Exhale, step it forward into your low lunge. Stay low. Spin up that right foot, cartwheel up, find your warrior two, stay here. Work on your pose. Again, hip points up, everything squeezes, opening, left knee tracking over the ankle, arms are nice and wide, squeezing the shoulder blades together for that nice straight line of energy. So we're gonna think about your heart energy shooting out past your fingertips. Inhale the front leg to triangle, sending that right hip back, Left leg lifts and lengthens, lifting your rib up and in, and create that space. Effort and ease, so it takes a lot of your core strength to create that nice elongation of the spine. Find a place that is comfortable, that you're not forcing, you're using your strength and your energy in this pose. Inhale, transition to warrior two, into your reverse warrior. Challenge the body, check in. How can we make this our best pose? 
Relaxing the shoulders, lifting and lengthening. Maybe getting low, root to rise. Feel your hip point point up again. Exhale, extended side angle, elbow on top of the knee. Lifting that right arm up. Finding that line of energy from your right heel to your right middle finger, straight line. We're going to reset back into our reverse warrior. We're going to vinyasa or shortcut to downward facing dog. I'm just going to meet you at down dog. Take that final inhale and final exhale. Lifting that right leg up. Let's take a big step forward into our low lunge. And we're going to transition into a crescent lunge. So stabilizing that right leg as you lift your arms up to crescent. So in my other classes, I've been really working on crescent lunge. So again, knee over the ankle, back leg is extended. If this is a little too much for you, you can bend that knee, but what you wanna do is you wanna lift your hip points up and engage your lower abdominal muscles. Exhale, we're gonna shift our weight forward, hands in front of the heart, or maybe take the arms behind you into your aerodynamic airplane. Don't let the body rest over the leg. You wanna anchor that foot and lift up. Inhale, sweep your arms back up high. Exhale, bring it inside that right foot, drop down to your left knee. Let's go for runner's lunge. Releasing your hips, squaring off your hips. Again, opening up the heart, front line. So this is a nice pose here. If you want to deepen in your runner's lunge, you can curl your left toe, lifting that Left knee off the ground and maybe coming down onto your elbows. From here, bring your left knee back down onto the mat, hands underneath the shoulders. We're going to take pigeon from here. So we're just going to toe heel that right foot to the left side of our mat. It's going to take a little bit of an adjustment. You're going to shift forward, bring the top of your shin bone to the mat, slide your left leg in a nice straight line. So be careful. Listen to your body. And then when you're ready, surrender into your pigeon. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Let's go ahead, curl that left toe. Exhale, send that right foot back to down dog. Making our way to the other side, left leg lifts up high. Step that hand, uh, foot between the hands into our low lunge, get low. Inhale, transition into your crescent lunge. Steady your balance here. Exhale, sweep the arms back. Or maybe take your hands forward in front of your heart into your aerodynamic air, uh, crescent lunge. So you'll notice you're activating that front leg, challenging your center and challenging your balance. Inhale, sweep your arms back up to crescent lunge. Exhale, hands by your left foot, drop down to your right knee, toe heel that left foot to the edge of the mat. Square off the hips. Get low if you want, or if you want to go a little bit deeper, curl that right toe, lift the knee off the ground, and bring yourself down onto your elbow. Breathe.
Gently bringing that right knee back down onto the mat. If you're ready for your pigeon, let's bring our hands underneath the shoulders and toe heel that left foot to that right side of our mat. Be careful, shin bone to the top of the mat. Square your hips, slide that right leg behind you. And get into your pigeon pose. Gently coming out of our pose, hands underneath the shoulders. Go ahead, curl that right toe, send that left foot to meet with the right, downward facing dog. And then from here, let's just walk our feet up towards our hands. And we're gonna slowly roll up to standing. All right. Ooh. Let's work on our balance. So we're gonna take tree pose with a bind. Again, heart opener, we're gonna open up the front line of the body. So when you're ready, let's make our way to Samasitihi, standing at attention. Wait onto that left foot, Tear, turn that right knee out and find your tree. Now to get into a bind, you can just release the hands. Lace them up behind your shoulders, back and down, rotate the bicep outward. And that is one way to do it. To go even deeper, maybe take your hands to prayer in your reverse namaste. So maybe taking your hands into prayer behind you, which can be very challenging in a tree pose. Try to keep the heels of your hands together. It's really deep. Go ahead and enlace the arms. Drop that foot back down. Cha 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 the knees. Let's do the other side. Hands in front of the heart space. Weight onto that right foot. Pick up that left foot up and in to that inside of the thigh, if you wish, or ankle, or the calf, never on the knee. So, another way to go for that bind. Let's go to take your arms to cactus and then see if you can drop your head back and open up your heart. I know, really challenging, right? Takes focus, find that drishti, ground that right foot down and then lift. Inhale back into your center. Foot comes down to the mat, cha-cha-cha the knees. Let's have a seat, you guys. I know some of you are saying, wow, not a child's pose. Well, because we're strong. All right, let's go for that forward fold. Walk off your seat. It's really important to create space underneath you before we fold forward, reaching our arms up over the head. Exhale, folding forward. Stretching out that lower back, feeling strong. Inhale the arms up over the head. And let's make our way down onto our mats. Lie on our backs. Let's hold on to our hands on over the knees and gently rocking side to side. Yeah, we need that massage in our lower back. All right. We rarely do this. I rarely do this. It's a stretch pose. So if you've had some neck issues, if you have whiplash, you probably want to avoid this pose. But to get into fish, it's again another heart opener. But this way, uh, you're going to take it lying down. So to start with fish, I want you to keep just listening to my voice. Gaze up to the ceiling and bring your shoulders down to the mat. So again, external rotation. You want to keep your arm bone back and down to the mat. Now you're gonna feel your arch, arch in your back. 
plant your hands alongside your body, and then we're gonna take our hands underneath us and create a bind, right? So you're squeezing the shoulder blades together, your hands are interlaced underneath your seat, and you're going to straighten out your leg, both legs. Now to get into a fish pose, you're already feeling their heart open. You're gonna take the top of your head as you lift up, top of your head is on the mat, opening up the shoulders, squeezing the shoulder blades, opening up your lungs just like a fish for four, three, two, one. Releasing the top of the head first, bring your shoulders back down to the mat, bring your feet underneath you, release the arms, and then windshield wipe for your knees side to side. And it takes practice to really get into that pose to know exactly what's happening. So what's happening is that your shoulders are rolling back and down. If I'll demo it here, if you can see me, and then I'm gonna take my hands underneath, or you can take your hands flat onto the ground. You wanna squeeze everything in, and you're gonna open up the heart. So you're gonna roll and lift and take the top of the head onto the mat. So it's like that nice heart opener and a slight inversion because your head is upside down. All right, let's pull those knees in. Right knee into the chest, left leg extends. Stretch it out, counter stretch. Left hand over that right knee, right arm releases into your twist. And really stretch out that right hip. Relax into your twist. Softening through the shoulders. Adding a little smile. Releasing the tension. Feeling tall in this, in this pose allows you to deepen your twist. There's nothing like working and keeping our lungs healthy. So take that deep breath in. Unwind your twist. And she'll wipe your knees side to side. Now let's counter the other side. The left knee to the left shoulder, not directly to the chest. Releasing that right leg. Get long and tall. Find that counter stretch. Small of your back is engaged to the mat. Right hand over the knee. Twisting to the right. Releasing that left arm across the floor. Softening the hips. The shoulders. Lengthening out that right leg, get long and tall. See if you can deepen your twist. Letting go of the things that no longer serves you. Gently unwind your twist, make your way onto your back. back. Hug your knees to your chest, bring your forehead to your knee, knee to your forehead, tighten up into a tight ball. Squeeze. Exhale, plant your feet down, release your feet one at a time and surrender into your Shavasana. Corpse pose. Take this moment to just appreciate what we just did, finding gratitude in our hearts. To continue to get stronger and healthier together. You are my tribe, and I continue to thrive because you continue to show up in these seeds. So thank yourself for showing up today.
begin to invite breath and movement back into our body. And gently awakening our recharged and renewed self. Maybe ending with a nice stretch, whatever feels good for you right now. And then turning onto your right side, just for a moment. Nice fetal position. Gently pressing yourself up with your new strength, new body into a seated pose. Let's end our practice by bringing our hands to our heart center, inviting our eyes to close or looking at our fingertips. And just take a moment to acknowledge, to acknowledge our spirit, our best self that we've awakened as we practice together. Hold on to this feeling throughout the day. I want to thank you so much for joining me. It's always an honor and a pleasure to guide you from my heart to yours. Namaste.